Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Sense of Tempo County Corso. So I wanted to talk to you guys about the Great Dane situation, the rescued Great Danes that um, that mauled their owner to death. Um, so um, I was reading in the article today, I feel like I'm too close. Just gonna have to show you my sucky background, unfortunately. I don't, or lack thereof background. Um, so anyway, so um, the owner, there was a lot going on. Apparently the woman was an alcoholic. Um, the dogs had aggression issues. They apparently were also fighting with each other and um, according to the husband, who was not home at the time, he was actually in jail, um, they would get into fights, and then whenever they would get into fights, they would take it out on the owner, the woman. And according to him, um, they, um, he had to get in between them. He had to stop the attacks um, from them from attacking her. Um, and he said that he had told her to get rid of them multiple times. She wouldn't do it. Um, she had rescued them. I think she said something about she really enjoyed working with dogs that were on like death row. And, um, and that um, she didn't want to get rid of them. He had told her multiple times to get rid of them. She didn't want to. So what I thought was interesting um, on top of like everything about it, like I said, it was a bad situation. The woman was clearly an alcoholic. Apparently the, um, the backyard had feces covering the porch to the point that you couldn't even see the deck underneath. So there's a lot going on there. Apparently there were like stacks of beer cans and, and things like that, but none of that makes a dog aggressive. Um, it just doesn't. What I found was interesting is that while the dogs did have aggression issues and they were taking it out on her, um, the husband said something that I felt was very telling. And that was that um, he had to stop the dogs from attacking her. Now, if the dogs responded to him, if he was able to get them to stop attacking her, then that clearly shows that they were able to be contained or controlled, um, just not by her. He said that she was very sweet, very loving. She had a big, kind heart. And um, what I will say to that is that there are many people that I have seen in the rescue community that have big hearts of gold, and they really wanna do, um, really, they wanna save lives. And I, I can respect that. However, many of the people that are doing that are doing it with dogs that their personalities don't actually match up with. And I think that that's exactly what happened here. I think that this woman was not the right personality type for these dogs. Now, am I saying that the dogs didn't already have aggression issues? Um, obviously they did, right? That's, I don't think that that's a question. Um, the husband even admitted that and he was able to control them. So clearly, even though they could be controlled, they had some issues. But having said that, um, I think that it is very important to recognize your limitations and dogs need, um, they need a leader first love second, okay? Um, you can get away with like some dogs with being, you guys, shh, quiet. Quiet. Belladonna, I swear, if you don't go lay down right now, go lay down. So Belladonna has been irritating everybody. I have cashmere put up because she's in heat and I don't want her breeding until I know that everything's okay with her. And so I have Belladonna out because I need the kennel and Belladonna is just being a butt. She likes to get in everyone's face and annoy them. Um, anyway, so they need love second, a leader first. And she wasn't a leader. Um, she just wasn't. Like being super lovey-dovey and forgiving and altruistic, altruistic, 
does not make you a good dog owner. It doesn't. It makes you a good person, um, but it doesn't make you a good dog owner, especially for large breed, powerful, dominant dogs. And I'll be very honest with you. I know that a lot of people think that Great Danes are like the gentle giants. That has not been my experience with Great Danes. It has not. I have rescued a Harlequin Great Dane from this wealthy guy's backyard. He had the dog just literally sitting out there. Um, and it was like raging against the fence. And um, he eventually was like barking at kids and he didn't want it anymore. So he um, was looking for a trainer. And I basically let him know, look, like I can't fix this. You're not home. You're leaving the dog out here. Like um, no trainer is going to be able to fix this. You have to bring the dog in and actually work with him. And he couldn't do it because he traveled so much. So he gave me the dog to find the dog a home. And the dog literally tried to bite me. Um, well, he didn't try to actually bite me, but he was fixing to. He was, he was growling at me. And luckily, my dog Oso, um, was back whenever I had pit bulls, um, he jumped up on the ottoman and, and growled at that dog and basically let him know, hey, you're not going to touch her. And he was, that Great Dane was huge, like a very big, powerful Great Dane. And the thing about it is, is they know how big they are. And, and so if they already have like a reputation um, and a habit of being in control, they're not just going to give it up. And, um, and it's such a large animal that it is very difficult to get that position of alpha with them without um, having some kind of tense moments. Now, I was able to get that dog rehabilitated and find him a home and all that, so he was fine. But um, I also owned a, um, I bought a Great Dane, um, Captain Murdoch actually was his name. And I just um, quickly realized that it wasn't a breed that I, that I liked. Um, they are much, they're more like a horse. They're much too aware of their size. And while you may have a Great Dane and your Great Dane may be awesome and your Great Dane may be gentle and your Great Dane may be friendly, not all of them are. And um, they are Mastiff and they're, they were never bred to be, um, you know, cuddle bugs. They weren't, that's not what they were bred to be. So there is gonna be a percentage of them that, that are not gentle giants. And so my point is that, you know, being loving and wanting to save lives is not enough. And this is a case where it was clear that it wasn't enough. You have to be, you have to give a dog what it needs and that's good leadership. Um, and that means that you need to be the alpha. And if you can't be the alpha, then it is best that you rehome that dog to someone that can, um, or that you not take on the responsibility of an animal that you don't have control over because then things like what happened with that woman happened, right? Like the husband was able to control the dogs. He didn't get attacked. Um, even during the times when things had happened before, he was able to take control of the situation and she was not. And it would, and it's not a coincidence that when he was not home is when it actually happened. And the worst part is that not only did, did it happen, but she actually was able to get help and didn't. She, the evidence shows that she went and, and changed her clothes multiple times. There was um, evidence that she had tried to basically bandage herself up. And I'm thinking the reason why she didn't call or, or seek help is because she knew the dogs would be put down and she didn't want that to happen to them. Once again, she was thinking about about the love aspect, the, the um, you know, like trying to save lives over her own life. It literally cost her her life, her wanting to save their lives, which inevitably was a lost cause because when she passed away, the dogs got put down. You know what I mean? Um, so it is a very sad situation all the way around. Um, I don't mean to in any way make light of her passing, but I do think that this is a learning moment for for people. I think that this is a situation that has happened um, many times. I know that um, there have been um, breeders that have contacted me to try to help people for um, with training because a lot of times people that are in the military, 
guys that are in the military, they have their wives that stay home with the children and they wanted a protection dog to keep the, their family safe. And they find that the, um, that the wife ends up getting growled at and corrected by the dog whenever she tries to tell him to do things or whatever, because she's not an alpha. She's a very, um, kind of meek and timid person, very sweet, very loving. I'm sure, uh, makes a great wife, but it doesn't make a great, um, owner of a large dominant breed and um, they've asked me for help and I've had a very hard time helping these women because you're basically needing them to call on a part of their personality that isn't very developed um, it's kind of opposite of who they are and they end up you know I think this one lady I remember she 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 kind of blamed the breed um, which I mean I guess it kind of makes sense like it's the breed is the breed you know what I mean it's like I can handle it, you know, it's not a problem for me, but you know, clearly was a problem for her and it is a breed thing. Um, and she was like, we just need a golden doodle. And it's like, well, you can get your golden doodle, but the golden doodle is not going to keep you safe, you know? So I think it's important to recognize I'm not, I don't want to seem like I'm like, um, what I don't want to seem like, no, is that I'm blaming the, 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 the dog per se. Cause I'm actually not what I think is important to realize is that the dogs really haven't changed. We have. Now, are there breeds with temperament issues? Absolutely. Um, this breed definitely has them. But I do know that the woman, one of the women in question, actually two of them, had um, dogs that I know didn't have temperament problems. Um, they themselves just couldn't handle the dogs. They were, they were low pack members trying to tell higher pack members what to do. Okay, you can't do that. You don't get to do that. Like it's, you don't get to go into work and tell your boss what to do. You don't. If you're not above someone at your job, you don't get to tell them what to do. And it's the same way when you have a pack of dogs or not even a pack of dogs, you have a dog, you are a pack. You don't get to tell that dog what to do if you're not the alpha, period. They're not gonna listen if they're a dominant breed. And that's natural. That's what they are, they're pack animals. And so it, I think it's important to remember that the dogs haven't changed, we have. You know, our personalities have changed. We have gotten softer as a country. I'm not gonna say that human gen humans in general have, because I don't believe that this is true for every single um, country, I don't. I think that there are other countries where people have remained tough and, and more in tune with nature. You don't, you don't have to be weak and soft and meek and soft-spoken to be feminine. You know, you can still be a strong woman and, and also be a good woman and be feminine. Um, and I think that that is important. Um, I think that those women that have those dogs could learn a lot about, about themselves and about bettering themselves if they had learned how to take control of that situation. But having said that, if you can't do that, if you're not willing to do that, if you want the dog to change for you and you're not willing to change yourself, then don't, don't get one. You know what I mean? Literally don't get a large breed protection dog. You know what I mean? You, you need to get some other method of protection. Um, and you can decide what that's going to be for you and your family. But, um, but I do think that we need to take a really hard look at ourselves in the mirror and, and really decide if we are doing what is in the dog's best interest, you know, um, you know, you want a protection breed, but yet you want to take away the, the instinct out of the animal, right? Like the, like you can't have it both ways. You can't have a dog that is going to respect a weak pack member, um, but is also going to respect your, or pardon me, um, protect your home. Like the, the two don't go hand in hand. So I think that it's very important that women learn to be stronger, um, to stand up for themselves in their relationship with their dog. I think it, this could be transferred in many other areas, you know, like there's lots of other areas in life where women typically don't, um, voice themselves and, and like, you know, really represent themselves w well. And, um, and I think that that is something that 
you know, getting better at that will help you in many other areas of your life, you know? So it's not just, it's not just going to help you with, with managing a large breed dog. Um, it's also going to help you with, you know, your job, um, and you're with your clients and things like that. You know, you don't want to be a doormat. And so, um, my door is just swinging around out there. Um, so anyway, so I just wanted to, to touch on that. Um, you know, you need, I guarantee you that that woman probably didn't think that that would ever happen. Um, I know her husband had talked about getting rid of the dogs, but I don't even think that he, I think that if he knew what they were really possible, what, what they were capable of, he probably would have gotten rid of them one day when she was sleeping. You know what I mean? I just, it, it nobody really ever expects this kind of stuff to happen. And it does. And, it, and it's happened, um, quite a bit. Not like, it's not like super common, but it does happen. And so it is very important that you not let your, your need to be kind and loving and sweet overpower your, your, your need to be a leader, to be a pack leader, to, to stand up for yourself, to set limitations, to set boundaries, and to be the alpha of your home with that dog. And and if you find that you can't do that, then I think that it is prudent that you not get these breeds and that you maybe get a cat, you know? Um, because honestly, like, any dog can can kind of revert in the wrong hands. You know what I mean? I think we've all watched Season Milan, even Chihuahuas can get out of control. Maybe they won't do the same amount of damage, but they can still be a nuisance. Um, even a golden doodle can be a nuisance. So either give the animal what it needs, supply its needs, or don't get one. I mean, that's just the reality of the situation. And if you find that you, that you have a dog that is trying to bite you, that is trying to growl at you, that is rising up against you, and you can't get past that, you can't take over that, that conversation anymore, then you need to to give that dog away to either somebody that can handle it or you need to think about whether or not that animal is a liability to to the population and if there's something else some other step that you need to take um back in the day you know we we had a very low tolerance for dogs that attacked and bit people and these days people will find any reason to save a life and I don't believe in that. I'll be very honest with you. I don't. I, I don't believe that every dog deserves to be saved. That's just the reality. I, I think that some dogs are a liability and they would be better off not in the population anymore. Um, and there are people that I'm sure going to be mad that I'm saying that, but I think that, um, that in this particular case, these two dogs were, were, were cases like that where, Sure, you know, that guy was able to control them, but he didn't even want them. He didn't even like them. You know what I mean? Like it just, it's um, common sense. You know what I mean? You get to a point where it's common sense. Like if you had a horse that was running around attacking everybody, trying to kill everybody, you would do something about it. You know what I mean? When a, when a bear does it, we, we take them out. When a cougar does it, you know, anytime we know that they've seriously hurt a person, we do something about it. But for some reason, we don't do it with dogs. And... Um, not until it's gone, you know, not until it's gone too far, I guess. And I just, I just think that we need to be more responsible and more practical about this and, um, and take some personal responsibility. So I hope that's not, you know, too offensive for some people, but I, I just have to say it. And, um, if you disagree, that's fine. We can all agree to disagree but that's my take on that situation. So I hope you guys are having a great night and um, I'll talk at you later. Bye.